given this equation, or I'm sorry, given these zeros, uh, what we have is we have 2 and 4 plus i. Now, what they want us to do is they want us to find a polynomial with given those zeros. So one thing I could do is we could write these as factors, right? When you write zeros, to write as a polynomial, it's best to write what the factors are. So this would be x minus 2, and this would be x minus 4 plus i. Right? X minus 4 plus i. Now, the one thing, you can multiply this and you know, you're going to get a polynomial, but it says they want a polynomial to the third degree. And the other thing you need to know is whenever you're given a zero as a complex number, you also know that the conjugate zero is also available. So therefore, I can write this as a factor as well, x minus 4 minus i. So whenever given a complex number, also know that your conjugate of your complex number is also a zero. So now I have three factors. So I know my polynomial is going to be to the third degree, which I believe this question actually asks. So there's a little bit of trick on doing this type of problem. We can multiply this just like three binomials, right? Pretend that um, this is you know, a term in itself. But an easier way to do this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to regroup these. So I'm going to write this as x minus 2 times, and I'm going to group the x minus 4 uh, let's see, x minus 4 plus i, and x minus 4 minus i. And the reason why I want to do this is because now, if you look at this, this is really kind of like an a, let's pretend x minus 4 is a. a equals x minus 4. So therefore, it's a plus i times a minus i. And now what you know is we have a difference of two squares. So when I multiply these, I'm going to get rid of my middle terms. So this is something very important that you always want to look out for in mathematics. So what happens is, let's say, let's multiply these. So x minus 2. So I have x minus 4 times x minus 4 is going to be x minus 4 squared. And then this is going to give me i times negative i is going to give me a, uh, a negative i squared. Um, and then, let's see, we get something. Multiply these. Yeah, I'll get my product here. i squared is going to give me negative 1. So let's go ahead and figure out my x minus 2. x minus 4 squared is going to give me x squared minus 8x um, plus 16. And then here I have a uh, i squared minus 1 is going to give me a, a negative, uh, negative 1. But times i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times this negative is going to give me a positive 1. So therefore I have x minus 2 times x squared minus 8x plus 17. Now I have to multiply my binomial times of a trinomial. And again, we're just going to use, you know, just make sure you multiply every term times every term. Uh, so let's see, x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 8x is negative 8x squared. x times 17 is going to give me a positive 17x. Negative 2 times x squared is going to give me negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 8x is going to give me a uh, uh, positive 16x. Can you switch and negative 2 and times 17. Please report to the gym. Ms. Whitfield and Ms. Altman. Negative 2 times 17 gives me a negative 34. I can just combine these now to give me x cubed. Uh, let's see, minus 10x squared. Let's see, plus 33x minus 34. So that would be my third degree polynomial given the zeros of 2, 4 plus i, and 4 minus i.